Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about several other reactions of carbonyl compounds, aldehydes, and ketones. One of them being the formation of what we refer to as an imine. An imine is a molecule which contains a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And these are formed very readily under acid catalysis when you take an aldehyde or ketone and react it with a primary amine. The difference between the reaction of amines and alcohols is that we don't generate the acetal-like product from amines because these tend to be not as stable as they are with alcohols. We add only one of the groups and lose water to form a carbon-nitrogen double bond. This is referred to as an imine or also called a Schiff base after the person who discovered these. These nitrogens are still somewhat basic and they have a lone pair which can be protonated. So how does this reaction work? In order to get the reaction between a neutral nucleophile and the carbonyl to proceed, you first need to protonate the carbonyl compound to activate it, just as we saw before with the addition of water or alcohols. So once we get the activated carbonyl compound, we can react with an amine to make the, the nitrogen addition product. And there are two hydrogens, and I'm going to use pH to represent the phenyl group. Um, this has a plus charge, and we have OH. The acid catalysis has an anion which generates the product, which will deprotonate the nitrogen, the plus charge nitrogen, and get to an intermediate, which we refer, we refer to as a hemiaminal, that is the addition halfway to the imine product. That acid can protonate the oxygen to make it into a good leaving group. That oxygen can depart. We get to a molecule which is assisted by the lone pair on the nitrogen to form the nitrogen as a plus charge. And then the acid catalyst is regenerated again by taking the proton off to generate our imine product. Now imines are very important because they're quite stable and useful in biological processes because carbonyl compounds can react with amines in proteins to generate imines. If you recall from our alkenes chapter when I was talking about double bond isomerization and its relation to vision, there's a molecule which is retinal which has a double bonded oxygen at this position which is an aldehyde. And retinal is important for binding in a protein to be able to absorb light through this double bond isomerization. And is the protein opsin that it actually binds to. And it binds to because there's a, a nitrogen amine compound on opsin which reacts with the aldehyde to form an imine or an aminium in this case since it's protonated in the protein. So this imine is the way to connect the retinal molecule to the protein to be able to allow us to see. So these imine molecules are important in a lot of different protein structures, this one for vision being one example. Well, imines are also important because imines can be reduced to amines, and it's one of the ways which we can synthesize amines. If you recall from the previous chapter, doing SN2 substitution with alkyl halides is not very productive because it overalkylates. We can make imines and then do reduction with hydrogen and nickel to make, in this case, a secondary amine without having overalkylation occur. This is what we refer to as reductive amination of carbonyl compounds. Another property of ketones is the fact that the hydrogen that's adjacent to it is somewhat acidic. And that's because if you, again, look at the resonance form for a ketone, you can draw with a plus charge on the carbon and a negative charge on the oxygen. And if you have a hydrogen next to that, that makes it much more readily available to come off. If you think about the pair of electrons from the CH bond forming a double bond and the H plus ending up on the oxygen, you can generate what we refer to as an enol. It's got an ene and an alcohol. This is an equilibrium. Again, this is either acid or base catalyzed, but this equilibrium can be established quite readily, and this changes the reactivity profile of these molecules. The ketone, which is typically an electrophilic species that reacts with nucleophiles at the carbonyl carbon, this enol form actually has a lot of electron density at this point because if you draw the resonance form and push electrons this way, we have a carbon with a lot of a negative charge on it. We can see the effect of ketoenol tautomerism because if we take something that has a stereogenic carbon with a, a single isomer, so this happens to be the R isomer, and we expose it to acids 
it actually undergoes a racemization. So we get the R isomer converting into the S isomer. And what happens is a formation of an enol, which now has an sp2 carbon. We lose the stereochemistry associated with that carbon because now it's flat. And then we can go back and forth and do an equilibrium. So what we, what we do is if we take pure R isomer, expose it to an acid catalyst, what we end up with is a 50-50 racemic mixture of these relatively quickly. And that's because it's going through the intermediate enol, which loses the stereochemistry information. Well, enols are also important for activating the bond for additions of electrophiles, as I mentioned. So for example, it's a good way to brominate next to a carbonyl compound. If you take a ketone such as acetophenone in the presence of an acid catalyst, you generate um, an equilibrium with the enol form. Now we have a double bond which can react with the bromine. This double bond can form a product with the bromine and then loss of the hydrogen to form the product ketone gives us the alpha bromo ketone product. So this is a good way to generate alpha bromo ketones using enols as nucleophiles for bromination. Carbonyls can be oxidized also to the carboxylic acid. There are several things which can do that, one of those being chromic acid. Uh, for example, H2CRO4, this chromic acid will oxidize the hydrogen to an OH group and make benzoic acid from benzaldehyde. A very famous reaction uses silver salt to generate the carboxylic acid. So the silver is doing the oxidizing. In the process, silver plus is being reduced to silver zero. And this is a test that was used to test for aldehydes. Only aldehydes will do this because they have a hydrogen which can be oxidized to an OH. Ketones will not. So before we had modern methods to determine the structures of molecules, people did physical chemical tests to determine what functional groups were present. So if you knew you had a carbonyl, but you didn't know if it was an aldehyde or a ketone, the Tollens test was one way to do that because when you carry out the reaction, it generates beautiful silver mirrors on the glass where that you do the reaction with because as the aldehyde is being oxidized to the carboxylic acid, the silver is being reduced to silver metal and making these shiny mirrors on the glass. Well, carbonyl compounds can be reduced to alcohols also by the addition of an equivalent of H-, and there are a couple of reagents which do that. As I mentioned before, we can't have H- just floating around, but we can deliver hydrogen with its electrons if we use Lewis acid, Lewis base salts of things like boron. If we take BH4, which has a minus charge, and then the sodium cation, or aluminum, which is right below it on the periodic table. This also has a minus charge. Lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride are very good reagents which provide a source of H minus. These H minuses can react with carbonyl compounds to add a hydrogen and reduce to an alcohol. So depending on what kind of substitution you have on your alcohol, you can make primary alcohols from an aldehyde, you can make secondary alcohols from a ketone by adding hydrogen in the negative charge form using these reagents.